All right, let's talk about this because uh, this is a humongous role for you. You're from Austin. Yep. And you've been in a lot of things, but never anything this big. Never. What was it like? How did you, first of all, how did you even get into this movie? Okay, well, I got into this movie by um, my agent, Liz Atherton, who's here in Austin. Um, she said, okay, look, I got an I got um, audition for you. So we taped it, but it, it had nothing to do with Super 8. It hmm. was about a girl and a boy fighting over math homework. And I mean, it, it was like... It had nothing to do with Super 8, and I was like, okay, uh, we'll do it, and so... So and you're not excited about it at first. You're thinking, ah, it's just, it's it's another, just another role. It's just another audition, you know? And so it, when you, you, I auditioned for, like, every single thing that I could to try to get to this for, for, from five years ago until now. Smart guy. Yeah. You have to try out for everything because you never know what it will become, yeah. and this is an example of that. It could be a J.J. Abrams, Steven Spielberg movie. Watch out. That's pretty uh, huge. <laughs> and um, so... She, I mean, six months later after the original comeback, I, I mean, original taped audition, she, uh, JJ told me face to face that I had the part, and it wow. was, it was just insane. So I had, six months went by here. Yeah. Wow. But it was like it was like a really long process. Uh, we were signing confidentiality agreements from the first callback. Uh, my sister and dad got some back home, and I mean, it was. Wait, so was crazy. the whole family had to sign confidentiality agreements? Yeah, I couldn't tell my grandma until two months in. You, this has been a very secretive, and I don't know if you've been to the theater, but they have kept this thing really under wraps. I saw the trailer for this, and I knew I wanted to see it. It looked good. And good you explosions. Saw, you, see, yeah. Yeah, you see Spielberg's name on it, J.J. Abrams' name on it, but you have no idea what it's about from watching the trailer. I still have no idea what it's about. No, just, <laughs> and you were in it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I, I think it's awesome because of all the hype that's building, and like June 10th when it does come out, people are just going to be so ecstatic you know, mm -hmm. whenever they see it. It was really kind of brilliant as far as marketing goes because you would think that maybe people wouldn't go see something when they have no idea what it's about, yeah. but it actually drives you and makes you want to go see it because you don't know what it's about. I'm so glad I was a part of this movie because I hate not knowing secrets. <laughs> I hate it. And so like people are like talking and like, what are, you, what are you doing over there? You know, and so knowing the secret, it's just kind of been like, oh, I know the secret. How <laughs> hard has it been though to keep the secret? Not hard at all. Really? I mean, oh, I, I've kept it, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. If Paramount's watching, I've, I've kept it. Um, They're going to own you if you haven't. Yeah, I know. And so, I mean, I kind of like keeping the secret and having that over my sister's head because she doesn't, she didn't want to read the script because she wanted to be the surprise, but, it, to be a big surprise. And you couldn't really read the script. You couldn't take the script off the set, could you? Uh, all, we had it in our hotel room, but it was in a safe at all times. In a safe. Don't worry. Don't worry. In yeah. a safe. In a safe. Wow, they really got crazy about this. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I love the, the, the premise of this movie, which you know we can't go too far into. I got to see a screening, you know, big relief. I, I finally got to see what it's about. And there is a phenomenal scene in this, first of all, with the, the train. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Can you talk about that? Well, uh, when a couple <laughs> of my friends saw it at that screening, um, I leaned over and I was like, get ready to see the coolest thing in your life. And I mean, it, it, it the, the it's so loud and the screen's so big it makes you I was my heart was racing I had goosebumps you know I don't <sighs> is it hard to I'm match still trying to get over is it. it hard to match that though with the acting because you, you see this this action that's incredible and the the visuals are incredible is it hard to match it with your acting oh uh, I mean kind of you're acting to a green screen basically yeah and exactly so, um, you just imagine as much as possible I mean if you are an actor that's kind of what you have to do. And so, I mean, it was hard at times, but at other times, JJ made it really easily, easy mm -hmm. to, uh, to kind of like let us do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you really went back in time for this movie. It's set in the 1970s, and as a product of the 70s, it really does take you back yeah. to that time. And I, I was saying I love the premise of this because it's like the kids run everything. <laughs> You know, it's like this gang of kids, and the whole movie centers around you guys. You guys drive all of the action and the dialogue, and, you know, there's some adults thrown in there, but you all really carry the movie. It's yeah. kind of unusual in that way. It's a, I think it was a really cool time. I kind of want to run stuff again. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was really kind of cool because the point that you made about people making movies back then, um, J.J. was inspired by Steven, and mm -hmm. we were inspired by J.J. to make movies. Now I hope millions of kids or adults around the world are inspired to make movies from this movie that mm -hmm. we're that making. And, and, you know, that's interesting because part of the premise of the movie is that you guys are making a movie when this train crash occurs and then all kinds of interesting things happen after the train crash. And, and so, yeah, maybe this would inspire other people. 
When you say that uh, he inspired J.J., Steven Spielberg, uh, it's a very interesting when you watch this film because it has that very E.T.-esque feel. And I know that you're a young thing, and I even asked you before we started this, do you even know what E.T. is? And oh, of, course, of course, I guess you have to since you've been on a Spielberg film now. Yeah, I'd feel like disgraced if I was like, who's Steven Spielberg? What? Yeah. Like, yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I mean, they had us watch E.T., Stand By Me, The Goonies. You know, it definitely has those movies feel. Yeah, it has that magic, yeah. that Spielberg magic. But it's a lot more fresh, and it's a, you right. know, it, it's not exactly like those movies. So you have something to look forward to when you go to the movies. Now, uh, so they had you sit down and watch these old Spielberg films. Yeah. That's interesting because they wanted to capture that same magic for this. Yeah, the the, the acting of the kids. I mean, in Stand By Me, um, I know uh, Stephen didn't uh, direct that, but it's still kind of. Jada wanted to put that inside of it. And mm -hmm. those kids, like, they act like they've known each other since they were two. Right. And a lot of JJ's um, process when we were auditioning was the chemistry the, between the kids. Are you guys friends now? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, you like, have to be. Like lifelong friends. <laughs> we, could, we can't not be friends after what we've gone through together. So you really get a lot out of this yeah, movie. Yeah, definitely. One of the big things you're getting out of this movie, I mean, you've been traveling around the world promoting this. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that you've had a roles in a lot of different smaller movies. But this is the first, like, biggie, biggie. You're yeah. traveling the world you're doing press for this, you're blowing up now. It's definitely like a dream come true. You know, you always like think maybe one day I'll get there, one day I'll get there. But I mean, to finally be here after six, five, six years, you know, it's just been really crazy. Uh, and you met Spielberg on the set. How intimidating was that? Well, I mean, two, <laughs> two other people, uh, Joel and Riley were filming a scene together and JJ always had uh, the other kids watch if they wanted to because he never wanted to separate us. Hmm. And so um, I, was watching, I was watching their scene and um, Steven walks in and I kind of just like follow him with my eyes because his back's turned to me. I'm like, <laughs> you know, just like a, if you just saw him on the street or something, you know. And so uh, JJ, after JJ calls cut, he, uh, he walks Steven over to them and he says, guys, this is Steven. And uh, I'm over there in a the corner by myself. And I had to work up the nerve to uh, go say hi to him with, by myself. Because you have to get it done. Yeah, you I have, have to. Get to. It out I'm like, way. oh, he knows me. He knows me somehow. I have to go at least say hi. Yeah, no, but so did you shake his hand? Yeah. Were you shaking? Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to keep it steady, I mean, stay cool, stay getting cool. To, getting to shake uh, two JJ and Steven's hand, it, it's just like the two most influential men in the world's hand. Right. It's just it's just crazy. I mean, once once you do know them, it, it's very intimidating to meet them. But both of them, they're so inviting, and so they never make you feel uncomfortable. I mean, they'll talk to you about really cool stuff like life, uh, like advice. Hmm. that I'll never forget, and also like iPhone apps, you hmm. know, just like cool stuff. Really? Yeah. I hope you wrote that advice down because it probably is good oh, stuff. Oh, no, it's like burned into my head. <laughs> you don't need to write it down. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when, when we're talking about how huge of a role this is, though, too, I mean, you're this little kid from Austin, and you've been living in Austin. Are you going to stay in Austin? I mean, I, definitely we're thinking about moving because you got to move, you know? Yeah, it um, might be time, right? It might be, um, but... I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. How exciting is it, though, that you get this chance to be in a Spielberg, J.J. Abrams film, and you get the character that you got? The character? Because your character stands out in this movie a lot. Yeah. Like I said, waking up in the morning and being myself. <laughs> um, you know, I don't go as crazy on fireworks as he does. I'm glad to hear that. Maybe, maybe once a year on Fourth of July. Yeah, because your character is kind of like the pyromania yeah. you know, kind of character. So I, I'm glad to hear that you didn't uh, bring that into your personal life. But really, this is a lot of your personality in this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my character, uh, Carrie, he plays a pyromaniac who basically ultimately life just wants to have fun. Right. You know, and he's the only one in the group who is happy that this train wreck happened. You know, <laughs> as you saw in the movie, he's, he's so pumped about it. You know, he just wants to explore it. And right. So, yeah. And the haircut? The haircut. Uh, before before the movie, my hair used to be uh, short and brown. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm looking at you, and I'm like, I'm so jealous. <laughs> that I, I want wow, my, somebody's jealous of my I hair. Want That's his a first. Hair back. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, I had to dye it blonde because right. uh, everybody else in the movie has brown hair, and I have blue eyes, so it, it looks really natural. Right. And uh, I definitely had to grow it out. And you had to have your braces taken off. Yeah. So that you could have bigger braces. Bigger put on. braces. Um, so I had braces before this, but um, it, they weren't 1970s braces. And I mean, it's a sacrifice <laughs> worth making. But I'd I mean, to get so. my braces off, I'm like, okay, take them off. <laughs> you know. But uh, they had double brackets on each tooth, uh, just like the 70s had. And, and they're humongous. They're humongous. I mean, my teeth were changing throughout the film, so it was sometimes they'd be really loose in my mouth because they were like Invisalign. Huh. So like, you could take them out. Uh, in and out and so 
uh, one time I'd be like, guys, you've got to, and they'd just like fly across the set. You know, so that was definitely a challenge. You had to feel sorry for 70s kids, yeah. though. I mean, we had it a lot harder. It was like a the... torture device, I swear. <laughs> but it makes your character stand out even more because you've got this crazy haircut, you've got these huge braces, and then you're just popping off the screen. You're this pyromaniac. I mean, it, it works. Thank you. Yeah. And that's got to be really nice to stand out in a movie this big. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we definitely all stand out, you know. Um, I mean, my character, like I said, really likes to have fun, and I think people really want to look for that, and, you know, I'm kind of the, com the comedic relief. Mm -hmm. And so when things are serious, um, when Charles wants to get his movie done, uh, when things are so serious, he's just popping off fireworks, like you said. So right. I, it's kinda, it was really fun. So what do your friends think of this? I mean, you know, you come back here to Austin, you're sort of big man on campus now, right? I, I mean, I, I guess. Um, they, I'm not really, I don't really ever want to be known as like, oh, he's in a movie. You know, I just want to be known as Ryan Lee. Like, he's always been my friend since kindergarten. So, I mean, all my friends, they, they understand that, they respect that. And uh, as well as them being so supportive and proud, they still treat me like they used to. It's not, Is that a different. good thing or a bad thing? I, I, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're I still treating you the yeah. same old way. Yeah. Uh, now, how did you get into all of this in the beginning? You say you've been doing this for about five years now. Yeah. What got you into this? Well, I mean, a lot of people used to tell me that, uh, or not me, my mom, that um, I should be an actor, or comedian, or something, because I go up to random people and just want to make them laugh. <laughs> and to tell a joke, I just hear big, like, guys, guys, come here. You know, and um, so, I mean, one, one summer we were just looking for a camp. We didn't know it was going to be acting. And, I mean, I just kind of pointed to acting. Hmm. And so that's... So it started with summer camp. It started with summer camp. And, I mean, you can get into acting in any way from going to classes, and then uh, just going to any auditions. I mean, you're an actor right away if you want if you want to be one. If right. you go on one audition, you can call yourself an actor, which is pretty cool. Well, congratulations on the film, and uh, sort of the sky's the limit now, right? Yeah. Very nice. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. I know it's not like shaking Spiel Spielberg, is Spiel it? You're like, ah, no, I got it is this. definitely. It is. <laughs> My hand was shaking right there too. Good to know. <laughs>